Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to our story of Ella and Alec and Agatha and Jacoby it seems as well as they've been included in the story all the way through. So let's head uh, back now to Agatha. Opening my eyes, I find myself in bed, not just anywhere, but in Jacoby's cottage. I remember this room from my last visit. I blink hard trying to remember how I got here in the first place. I recall Jacoby opening a portal to his cottage, but after that, everything gets fuzzy. Turning over, I find Jacoby standing beside the bed. Is all things bare-chested and fierce. A girl could find worse ways to wake up. A speech begins without any specific planning from my head. I blame the bare-chested thing. I dreamed about you last night. Jacoby chuckles. That happens a lot when you're me. I saw you standing by my bed with wings and horns showing. I thought that was just a dream. It wasn't. Last night, I couldn't cast glamours to hide my true form and save your life at the same time. Afterward, I kept up a vigil to ensure you're recovering. Guess the glamours slipped my mind. My heart lurches in my chest. Jacob has saved me. Oh, a small smile rounds Jacoby's mouth. He fixes me with a look that I can only describe as overwhelming. My stomach feels as if it's spinning about, pinwheel style. The moment turns too intense. Better change the subject. I try to force myself to sit up, but it isn't easy. Jacoby helps me and fluffs a few pillows along the way. Once I'm in place, I try sorting through everything that happened. I pull up my sleeve. What got me sick? Was it that scratch from the shadow morph? Yeah. It put poison in your system. I also dreamed you had something on your chin. Or mouth, maybe? Jacoby raises his brows. You remember that? Sure. I couldn't get the antidote into you. I cast spells, poured infusions, tried injections. Nothing would take until I put some of the antidote on my lips and... I picture kissing Jacoby. Very thought does all sorts of strange things to my insides. Um, maybe I heard him wrong. You kissed me, I ask, for medicinal purposes only. Oh, I focus on Jacoby's lips. His mouth is full and firm. And would it be like, what would it be like to kiss him while I'm awake? The idea sends waves of warmth and attraction running through me. Looking up, I meet Jacoby's gaze. A fire lights his eyes. And a beam of light shines through my comforter. It's coming from my hip. A memory appears. I felt this way when Jacoby and I were swimming in Sweetwater Cove. My moonbeam mark started glowing back then too. Grabbing a pillow, I set it over the spot. This is awkward. I don't see why. Many elves have magical tattoos. Where did you get yours? I was born with it. Really? Jacoby steps closer. May I see your mark? You didn't check it last night? No, I was more concerned with other things. I blush. Oh, I seem to be saying that a lot today. Bit by bit, I pull the comforter aside, revealing the image of a crescent moon with three stars. The mark glows on my skin, along with some odd words that Jacoby traces with his fingertip. Everywhere the prince touches me, there's a trail of electric excitement on my skin. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, he says. A bubble of awesomeness forms around us. The rest of the world seems to vanish. Can you read the words? Jacoby nods. What do they say? Tell me. I can't. That's your true name, Agatha. If I say it aloud, it lets the logic hang out there. We'd be bonded. Yet again, I can only manage a single word. Oh. A rhythmic thud echoes in from the outside the windows, breaking the moment. I can't decide if that makes me happy or depressed. What's that noise? I ask. It's probably Xanos. He normally checks in in the morning. Jacoby crosses the room to look at the window. His mouth thins a worried line. What is it? I ask. Trouble. Jacoby stands to straight and tall. Suddenly he's all princely again. You know how Nala Dell is the queen of moonshadow, which is the opposite of moonbeams. I'm the prince of fortitude, and my opposite is minuscule. We don't play well together. Hmm. One of their representatives is on the way. His name is Froth, 
and he's a top counsellor to their leader, Kaiser Mandrake. How can you be sure? All minuscule wear plague masks, and Frost's version is rather dark and pointy. He also carries a particular walking stick. My eyes widen. Plague? Don't worry. They only release disease if they think they can get away with it. And with me, they won't try. Even so, something in his face tells me that Jacoby isn't so sure of what he just said. Jacoby. After changing into more formal clothes, I step into my main reception chamber. It's a long and rectangular space made of wood. A line of benches surrounds the walls. I smooth the folds of my tunic and wait for the inevitable. Sure enough, it happens. A low knock sound at the main door. I pause and count to twenty before answering. It wouldn't be good to seem overly interested here. I pull the door open. Froth stands on the cobblestone path outside. He's a squat figure in his black cloak. The pointed face of the plague mask gleams in the morning sun. He leans against his cane. Hello, Prince Jacoby. Under the clock, Froth is not a unified being as most of they are. Instead, he's a conglomeration of countless tiny particles, all of which is why, when he speaks, he sounds like a thousand voices. The greetings, Froth. Turning, I march into my home. I don't bother inviting him inside. Froth knows to follow me into the chamber. Once we're both inside, Froth gets right to business. I am here... For one simple reason, says Froth, your herd is gone, your power is nil. Over the years, I've learned to carefully school my features. For a fraction of a second, my eyes widen in surprise. I quickly restore my look of calm detachment, but it's too late. Froth can tell that his accusation has caught me unaware. Normally my spies give me a heads up on any rumours about my supposed weakness. But can Froth be right? Is my herd really gone? The moment I stepped through the portal, I knew, I knew something was wrong. Normally, I would have gone to check on my herd at close range, but they seemed so peaceful, I didn't want to bother them. Then Agatha fell ill. Whatever worried I may still have held, and got past and pressed to the back of my mind as I focused on healing her, and then watching her recover. I turned the idea over in my mind. It isn't possible for my entire herd to just have vanished. That would require more power than I've ever seen in fairy, which leaves one option. You're lying, I state. Cast a spell, retorts Roth. Prove me wrong. My muscles tighten with shock. For the first time, I consider the fact that my herd may have actually been stolen away. I simply must know the truth. Magic swirls inside me all the time. I now pull on that energy and focus it before me. An overpower materialises between my arms. I speak in order in my mind. Show me my herd. Different images appear inside the sphere. There are the rolling fields where Mernherd lives, the caves at the house my two-headed bears, the barn with my harpies call home. All are empty. My herd is gone. That can only mean one thing. When I checked my fields last night, there must have been some kind of illusion set over the place. Damn again. I thought they all looked too peaceful. I should have suspected magic was at work. Low in my arms, I dismiss the smell. In this moment, I wish Froth had an actual face instead of a mask. That way, I could read his features. Without seeing any expressions, I must run through the logic of this situation. The smart money is on the fact that Kaiser Mandrake has somehow kidnapped my herd and now wants a ransom. Why are you here? I ask. It isn't what I wish, but what my master requires. He knows you're a clever fellow. He asked me to stop and inspect the situation. I spin his words from my mind. Inspect the situation. Kaiser Mandrake sent Roth over here to find out if I'm unprotected, which I am. And what are you looking for in particular? You have quite the collection of healing herbs and magical items. My master finds such things interesting. Prof steps closer. What's to stop me from taking these items from you right now? So that's the true meaning of Frost's visit today. Someone else took my hood. Considering who's sleeping in my guest room, I'm now guessing that he will do it if he don't other than Nardell. Prof isn't here to request ransom. He's more of a early vulture come to pick over the carcass of my property. 
I inspect the air around Frost's body. His form is surrounded by what looks like dust motes. They aren't. These are all some of the particles that make up Frost's consciousness. I've seen this happen before. Froth is prepping little bits of himself to fly away and alert others from the minuscule. Kaiser Mandrake has a limited number of battle tactics. One of his classics is to send in a minion to scout before releasing his entire army. What Mandrake lacks in creativity, he more than makes up in effectiveness. How many of your brethren are lurking by my borders, I ask. Two hundred. And seventy-three. In other words, a good part of the Mandrake's army. Now, if I had my herd here, I could simply summon up one of my sky whales. The, they skim particles from the air, just as their counterpart siphon krill from the water. All of Kaiser's army would be consumed in minutes. But my sky whales are gone. Froth is right. I'm unprotected and alone. Even worse, though. So is Agatha. Oh boy, and that's the next part of the story, guys. Not looking good. Thank you for listening, and many blessings.